compared to compared to the uh, uh, doing it this way on the desktop. So I prefer I, the I, I, desktop. I, I, it said recording in progress. It says Zoom meeting, and everybody went off. Oh, oh we're here. We're here. Oh, we're I got still, nobody. Just maybe swipe your thing again, maybe. Maybe that's what you got to do. I don't know. I, I, I can see everybody as far as I know, so everybody's good here. I don't even see myself. You're on. <laughs> I, okay, see you. I, I see you, man. All right, that's all okay. Just press got it. Yep. Somebody so, try. I think just because you're having your some internet issues because you kind of lag out a little bit. That's what it seems like to me, anyway. I guess you, I and, I be got, you and I only got the best interview. In, uh, internet, best internet. Yeah. Well, I mean, my internet's not that great either, but it's because of my computer. I have a good computer. That makes everything more stronger. So when I move to Brooks tomorrow, yeah. my internet connection will be way better than what I got right now. So yeah, just you wait and see, man. I'll tell you. We're getting the good stuff. Yeah, I can't right. wait, man. Yeah, if it's I knew closer, great. dude, I would have I would have moved you for you. I would have helped you move. Yeah, I understand. It's fine. I don't want to make it seem like you know, like I'm trying to be needy or anything. I just don't have these type of tools myself, you know. I'm just right, right. never that type of person. I never thought I mean this was kind of a kind of a out of a whim type of thing, you know, mostly. Like right. To, to move it is so I can save money. I'll have more money if I move. If I don't move, I'm kind of fucking myself. And I don't right. want to fuck myself. It's not fun to do that, dude. I've done that right. enough, dude. So. Well, we're waiting for Mad Dog to get on, folks. If you're waiting for a show, he was on. <laughs> I don't know what the hell he did, but he got off. But uh, And this is his his night. I mean, I wanted to do something night. special, you know, just to, to honor, you know, because I figured, why not? He's your brother. I've already told you how much I feel about you, so I want to feel the same way about your brother, too. So it's like, you know, why not honor him the right way, you know, the best that I can, you know? So, so but if, he's, if, it's, if, if, if it screws up, then that's on him, I guess. I'm just trying to be nice, you know? Yeah, I know, you know, I know. One, one time only thing. So if it's just you and I talking about him, it may just have to be, you know? I mean, whatever. You know a lot more about him than I do, you know? Can you, he was can on, you? too, man. It was like, was yeah. like wow, he finally did it. <laughs> what we can talk about last night, man. I tell you, people were asking me about how I hooked everything up, you know, with the whole uh meet and greet and everything. And it was it was well it was a it was I didn't Sue. Know you were doing that. Well, that's kind of the that was kind of a surprise for my brother in law because my brother in law was a big huge blackstone terrier fan. I knew I know who they are. And I definitely have a lot more respect for them today than I did yesterday, you know, just because right. of what they've done for all of us. And but it was uh it was a blast, man. I mean, it was uh I've had this happen before where you know certain times when I've interviewed people or whatever that they offer, they say, Hey, you know, we, we love the uh the getting the promotion for the interview and we love having you be the host. Would you like uh, what, anything in return? And I said, like, well, I mean, it's up to you. I mean, whatever, you know. Right. I just right. appreciate you because you're, you know, I'm a fan of what you do, you know, or, or I, I support it or whatever it could be. So I've gotten free uh, passes to movies, free uh, uh, DVDs of movies. If, if somebody did a movie or something or a documentary on something, I've done free of CDs, uh, backstage passes, to meet and greets, and everything. And or better seats than what I originally purchased. Didn't realize I had I didn't have to purchase anything prior to that or or, or after I purchased because they were right. going to hook me up. That's happened a couple times where I just end up giving tickets away to other people because I got better seats because of what they gave me. Right. And so this is not something that happens every day, but I'm really happy that I had you know, that they did this because I they released a new album and you know for you. Since you're screaming, Sam, you, you should uh, approve this album because it's, their new album is called Screaming at the Sky. Really? So, yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of, you know, I mean, it's, 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 I was, I was surprised too. I should have just had you join me for the interview for the yesterday afternoon because you would really love that. Screaming at the Sky. Yeah. You know but, what, you uh, know what's good though, Sean? The interview wasn't real long. It wasn't like some interviews you have to watch because we drag it out too far and people don't hold on. Yeah, well, 
if you're a real fan of, of either the people who are presenting this, the show or the people who are on the show, you'll stay till the end. I'm not here to please yeah. everybody. I well, just I know, what I'm saying. When, I'm when you have naked chicks in front, they stay. <laughs> Hello. Well, here. Uh, hey, how's it going, Nancy? I'll just whip up my dick dog and see if anybody will stay. You know, so I don't think anybody will stay. Yeah, yeah I can hear you. We, we lost the lot. Somebody called me and threw me off. Oh, is that what it was? Well, make sure you have your phone off or like your your if there's a way to turn that off. Because yeah, that's happened to Tina before or Tanya before too. So I'm sorry, man. That's it's all right. You're all right. you're stressed so... out too much, but we can we we can start now just to get it going. All right. Are you ready, all right. Sam? All right, I'm ready. All right. Dude. all right, let's do this. All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to a special Renegade Radio exclusive. Right here, this is not a, a, a normal show. Just like yesterday when I did my interview with John Fred Young from Blackstone Cherry, uh, which I will have that interview up on YouTube probably within the next day or two. Uh, today, we are doing another interview, but with one of my co-hosts that I do, that joined, uh, was nice enough to join me for Renegade Radio. He's a brother to Screamin' Sam. His name is Mad Dog. That's what his wrestling name used to be. And that's why his nickname, what people still call him once in a while, because he was an independent wrestler for the, the great state of Pennsylvania. And his his the real name is Tony Lutz, Anthony Lutz. And uh, we love him to death. And he just got inducted to the Hall of Fame of the KSWA Hall of Fame uh, just this past weekend. And I saw all the photos and the videos and everything. And uh, it was it seemed like a really good time. Uh, I wish they were let you wrestle a match, man. But uh, it was it was good. To, uh, it's good to have you on, Anthony and Mad Dog. Welcome to the show. Welcome to this exclusive tribute. It to was a you. blast. It was a blast. Yeah, thank you for uh, having me on. It was fun. And if I had to wrestle again, uh, I couldn't even get up into the ring. They had to help me up into the ring. <laughs> <laughs> me and my brother, they had to get people to push us up in there. We couldn't get in. You know? <laughs> Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe if you and Sam became a tag team, you know, and just did some tag team wrestling, that's I. I'd like to see Sam get in the ring and wrestle or whatever. That'd be fun. <laughs> he I can time. I, I'm actually trying to talk them guys into giving me a, a match when I get a little. I got 20 more pounds to lose when I get my knees fixed, just because I've never wore the KSWA belt and I'm in their Hall of Fame and I had, I had four heavyweight titles and I had two tag team titles, one intercontinental title, but okay. I had. To have, from the KSWA, and I'm going to get back in the ring, and I'm going to beat them all up and get that back. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, it's, it's, it's cool that they they uh, decided to do this for you because, uh, or at least they induct you into to their Hall of Fame because, uh, you know, that's that, that's the thing. You know, a lot of these older guys, you know, wrestling or whoever wrestled, you know, a lot of these guys I've never even heard of. You know, most of them, because, you know, if they're not a top superstar, you know, most people don't, you know, care about independence. But I think nowadays people do care more about independent wrestling than they used to, because independent wrestling is like more is getting more mainstream than it ever used to get. You ever right. follow well, that at all? Do you ever believe that at all? Yeah, absolutely. And, and the reason why you didn't know the, the guys that were inducted with me were actually uh, they used to have a wrestling in, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania called Studio Wrestling. And a guy named Bill Cardill used to run it. And that was the WWF back then. There was no WWF. Uh, Vince McMahon Sr. bought this little wrestling outfit from Pittsburgh. But a lot of the guys that were in the Hall of Fame with me, they were very, very popular here in Pittsburgh. But them guys were obviously in their 80s and 70s. And I was the youngest guy on the panel who, who put in. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like yeah. The, beast, the beast is the reason the guy got put on me. His name's Beast Ken Cameron. He was the reason why I started wrestling. I went to see him when I was a young kid, and he 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 stuck on my mind. And to be inducted in the Hall of Fame with him was an honor. It was just a oh, absolutely. That's it. It seemed like you, you you were having a good time, and it seemed like you were out of everybody that was getting inducted. You seemed to be the most active guy that really really wanted to feel this moment again. Like it's in your blood. He rolls the crowd up, you know what I mean? He gets the crowd going. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, that job, Sam, that was your job. <laughs> yeah, I figured you were screaming at everybody. I didn't really hear much I screaming did. from I, you. I, no, you I, didn't. Interview, I screamed a little bit, but. Oh, no, I'm talking like really getting like a fan's face. Like saying, oh, you oh, motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> you know what the funny part was? 
is uh, you couldn't see us in the ring because they had this real big heavy set guy was probably bigger than me and Johnny was taking pictures. He was standing right in front of us. I'm like, yeah. Dude, <laughs> Act the one way or your tits the other way. I don't know what you got to do, but <laughs> my family's trying to film this moment and we couldn't get the film on because of him. But if you so tell, us, closely, tell us, Tony, how did, how did it, how did it all start? I mean, I, I mean, I remember, but Sean don't, the audience probably don't, but um, tell us how it developed and uh, you know, about your managers. And uh, you know, you had a little midget manager one time and, yeah. You know, tell us, Bill, tell us how it started, man. Well, how it started was as I was doing security for uh, a wrestling show. And uh, there was a guy named Lord Zoltan. He was uh, Kenny Jugan. He was like the head of the wrestling alliance. He said it was his, his uh, wrestling show. And one day I was doing security. He goes, when this guy walks down the ring, you take him when he comes on. Just throw him in the ring real easy. You know, and then we'll pin him and everybody will blame you for being a security guy, you know? So, is everybody still there? Oh, yeah, we're here. Yeah. We're here. Well, anyways, so when the guy come out of the ring, I got so excited. I threw him and he went over the top rope. Now, that's seven foot from the floor. And I grabbed this 200-pound guy and threw him six feet near over the top rope. And he, he when after the show was over, he come to me and goes, dude, you really throw him? Like, I can't, no one can believe that. They're like, hey, you want to wrestle in our next show? And I'm like, ah. So and it, it was our church hall. My father, Father Walt was our preacher. And uh, we were having a wrestling show for our youth association. It was bankrupt. There was no money in it at all. So he asked me if I would do the card, you know, to sell more tickets because I was a pretty popular guy in our parish, you know. So that's another reason why it started that way. The same guy. Said if you could throw a two hundred pound guy seven foot in the air and over the ropes, you can imagine what you can do in the ring. So we ended up selling out the show, and that's when I my first manager I took in. And wow. I don't know if you want questions before I go into details with that because that's a long show there. Well, what what I want to know is what's really interesting to me about how I well, why I was so interested in, in your story is because you uh, looking at your old photo. From you from years ago, okay. Like, you see? no, no, I like, like you see my background, like you see the the, the photo that we have for the okay. I get Rick Steiner vibes from that photo. Yeah. So Everybody tell me does. the in, tell me the inspiration between between uh, of, of kind of be like a a Rick Steiner. Not not I'm not going to call it say rip off because you're not a rip off. Yeah, but you were almost like a clone of of, of the dog faced gremlin, and that was like. <laughs> Totally awesome. How that come about? That's that's actually the tattoo that Rick Steiner has the same arm and everything. But so you I, so you were a big Rick Steiner a fan of the Steiner Brothers then, or or like oh, a, a Rick fan. But that was my get up. Steiner had it way before me, and actually in a couple of shows they wanted me to be like a Rick Steiner villain. They wanted me to, you know, they were going to tell everybody that you they had on the show, and then I would come down, and I just I didn't fall for that, man. I'm like. I ain't gonna rip off the people and tell them it's Rick Stein and they come and see uh was in half as good a shape as him and I was half the ringmaster that he was, you know. So did you ever, I did it. <laughs> did you ever get to meet him at all? Like in person? Yes, at all? yes I, okay. I met Rick, met uh, Scotty, yes. Okay. Hey, what's going on with my freaking <laughs> camera here? Yeah, we got uh oh, Mama T, she wanted to participate in this uh uh, our interview with you and, and, and you know and that's fine too because you know i want everybody to get to know about our, our people and, and the people that are in our show and mad dog just happened to have a big weekend you know with being inducted to the hall of fame for the kswa so you know so mama t if you got any questions for mad dog since you got to know him a little bit uh go right ahead and ask well who all have you wrestled against that everybody has heard of well, if you guys didn't follow wrestling as a younger younger kids, I, I don't think you would have heard of any of them because this is in this was almost twenty five years ago, thirty years ago, and it was. That's uh, what I thought. Remember <laughs> Nikolai Bulkov, the Russian yeah. nightmare, you the national anthem and waved the Russian flag, and everybody booed him. I wrestled uh -huh. the Iron. I wrestled Superfly Jimmy Snooker, which everybody knows who Superfly is. And uh, I wrestled the likes of uh, Bunkhouse Buck, uh, 
He was a big guy in WCW. Yep, yep, yep. I what remember him. The brother, the, the uh, brothers, Tone. Coco, beware! I wrestled the uh, Bushwhackers. Yeah, yeah the Bushwhackers. They, uh, the, they were called the New Alien Herders before they were the Bushwhackers. Absolutely, so, I I remember those too. Uh, Buckhouse Buck, uh, you take me back to the days of WCW. During right. the, they used to have the famous Bunkhouse Brawl, and and, right. and that was uh yeah. I mean, I used to I was a big WCW mark, man. You know. Hey, when I uh no, you made me I was going to say, but when I was doing the Bushwhackers, they saw found out my mom was in the crowd. And they went and got her up and started licking her and making her march around the ring like them. And you know, you know my, my mom, she's a little mean Italian lady, man. I thought she was going to kick the shit out of both of them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they, got my mom, they're against me. they got my mom marching around the ring, pointing at me and shit. Like, ah. Uh... <laughs> oh, that's that's awesome. You know, and, and, that, and that's the thing about it with, with independent wrestling, especially. You, you never know where the road's going to take you. You never know where you're going to end up. I'm sure you wrestle. Did you wrestle anywhere else other than Pennsylvania? I mean, or, yeah, I'm sure you. you know, I would try to stay with a 400 mile radius because I worked six days a week at a regular job. I couldn't get Saturdays off. So if I had a job Friday night, I mean, I went as far as sometimes Somerville, West Virginia. That was a six hour ride. And that was a Tony Atlas show. And Tony Atlas went, went into the crapper for a while and he wasn't really paying everybody, but I didn't care. I used to go to shows. I didn't care if I got paid. I wanted to get in the ring. I needed ring time. And that's why I stayed independent. And a lot of these places, you'd go there, you might be on the card, and you might get bumped at the last second, and you're done. So we didn't have wrestling. Like the WWF runs every night of the week. We ran once a month. And whoever You tried to get into six different cubs so you can run with them every month to get some ring time. You know what I mean? It's almost sure. like it's almost like comedy. I mean, to get stage time, we had to go to open house, open mic, just to see if we could get on back in the day. You know what I mean? Dude, you know, I used to go know. to the backyard wrestling matches, and they would videotape just to get on them. I actually am on the Atari game. It's called uh, Backyard Wrestlers. They actually have a, a character. It's me. It's Mad Dog. If you ever get that old Atari tape or the old when it first come out, the wrestling. The backyard wrestlers, they have a mad dog. He looks just like me. And hey, Tony, real fast, real fast. Um, I just want to let you know, George Alia, he's, he said he supports you from San Antonio, Texas. Oh, yeah. That's the – oh, yeah. I met him I met him a couple weeks ago. He come to a Steeler game. Right. I, that's who it was. He said mad dog. <laughs> so funny. My first pay-per-view show I got to do with ECW. That's what happens. You know, you're all ready to do it. And I got bumped. So they put me on before the, the matches started. And they called that the curtain closer. I went in and warmed up the crowd. Got my head knocked off. I bled all over the goddamn place. And and then <laughs> I didn't get, even get on the show, you know. Well, ECW was known for extreme <laughs> wrestling. So, I mean, Jesus. I mean, it's just like one of those type of things. uh uh, because uh, I I know back in the day, like uh, when ECW was a thing, like uh, they would their matches, they would go pretty bar barbaric. Did you ever like wrestle like into like a barbed wire match or anything like that? Yes, yeah, he did. He got all cut up. He got oh, all okay. cut up in the face. I was in I was in American hardcore wrestling. I got wrapped in barbed wire, dropped through about eight tables from a balcony. I mean. I used to tape razor blades in my wrist, and I used to juice, man. When they said you're juicing, you had to be prepared. So what you do is you take a double-edged razor blade. You shouldn't tell anybody. Oh, uh, no, no, you, you should. because No, you should because people need to know about you know, all these fucking people that talk about wrestling being fake and everything, you know. It's good to tell them the real story of what of what, is, what it takes to, to put on a show and to, to, to tell a story of a wrestler like you. I mean, man, t bear all, man. Tell whatever you want. It's, it's what it your was, time. What people didn't understand, they say, oh, fake blood, they had blood capsules. What the piss are you talking about, a blood capsule? He cut himself. I had a double-edged razor blade taped to my wrist. And when that guy would hit me in the head with the chair, if you ever noticed, the guy would turn around and show the chair to the crowd. So everybody's yeah. looking at him with the chair, and I'd be on the ground pulling my razor blade out, just, just whacking, man, up, down. Never deep, but long. And you don't want to go deep because you get scored. Well, I got my head is 
if you could see it's all scarred up. But sure. and I would take four or five Tylenol, drink a beer, and I'd leak like a pig, man, everywhere. And then the referee would come down and check on me, and I'd slide the razor blade to him, and he'd put it in his pocket, and he'd get up. You know, sure. and then by then, everyone was looking at me slicing my head off on the floor. They were just looking at the guy. He'd run around screaming, yelling, everybody be booing him, you know. But I ran oh. around with them for two years. I, I did everything you could imagine in American hardcore. It was, it was crazy. Well, and then that's the thing. And you definitely felt it. I mean, it, it definitely was a real, real thing that happened to you. I mean, anytime somebody throws a chair at you, puts you through a table, kicks you in the balls, whatever, you know, it, you, you're going to feel it. And I'm just sick and tired of these guys call wrestling fake, you know. Hey, Sean, yeah, he went through, he he went through eight chair. What the hell is a loaded chair? Will you take a metal and soften it? You can't soften <laughs> a metal chair. You know? Hey, Sean. Yeah. He went through eight tables, two floors. <laughs> yeah. He ended up in the hey, basement. <laughs> one day really? I went in a cage match. One day I was in a kidding. cage match. We had this two by four. We pounded nails through the two by four. And we only had them sticking out like a quarter inch so they couldn't do no damage when you got hit with it. You uh -huh. just get a little puncture wounds. But through the match, the nails got pounded in further and further and further. And he hit me in the head at the end. And the two by four stuck to my face. And he said, Look, turn around and show the crowd. This is crazy. And I'm walking around with a two-by-four sticking out of my head. I pulled the two-by-four up, and that night I was laying in bed. I could taste my brain juice leaking down into my throat and shit. They had to plug my hole in my head. I had to go to the hospital, and they plugged the hole in my head. So if you want to talk about <laughs> fake my ass. So let me ask you this, then. Why are you still alive after all that brutality? Why are you because still alive? Because of his manager. Because <laughs> of his manager. <laughs> I need a manager. <laughs> I'm the man. I make sure my guy stays alive. Yeah, hey, but Sean. okay, okay. Tell me, hey, explain, Sean. explain what you mean by that, though. Yeah. Frankie, yes. People don't notice, and I'm going to say because it all started. Screaming Sam actually started with the wrestling. Oh. Whenever we found out I looked like Sam Kinison, I didn't have a name. My brother come up with the name. And first he come up with Screaming Demon Sam, and I didn't like that name. So he come up to, with Screaming Sam. What you do, Screaming Sam? You know what I mean? And my brother's the reason why I'm Screaming Sam. Oh. And it all, I started in the ring, in the ring before on on the stage. Well, that's interesting to know because I, I I guess I never knew that you never told me that in interviews or no, nothing. I never before, told so. anybody that, but he, Tony's the one to come up with Screaming Sam. Okay, interesting. Yeah, Johnny, if you just seen the one match. He finally turns against me, and we're doing it at a home match in our church, and everybody knows me. And that was loves the best. Me. I'm walking down the ring, and he's choking my collar and pulling me back, and I'm like, what are you doing, Sam? What are you doing? He's trying to hurt me before I get in the ring. And then all of a sudden, he gets up, and he takes my picture, his picture, and he rips it in half, and he goes, I don't want to be with a zero. I want to be with a hero, and he went with the bad guy. So he ended up, like, caught my ass beat. <laughs> that, that room spit on him. They were booing him. His son says, "Dad, I don't know if I can ever forgive you again for turning on Uncle Tony." It was hilarious. <laughs> People believed that shit so bad. You know what I mean? They believed that he really hated me. You know? Well, how? Uh, yeah, no, no, go ahead, there, Sam. No, good, good, Sean. I just wanted to kind of get an idea from you know because of being an independent wrestler more than just being a, a wrestler on TV. Did they really try to do a lot with storytelling? I mean, in, in independent wrestling back in the day? Independent wrestler, because you don't run in that time every uh, every week or then on TV every week. You actually had to tell your story on the way down, start it in the ring, and then finish it on the way out. Because the next time you went to, nobody knew who the hell you were again. Sure. Or the next okay. city or something. Unless you ran in somewhere once a week or once a month, you, we would have storylines. But we didn't have TV. We didn't even have entry music. You know, you walked on. I would make the crowd hate me. Before I got down there, I'd have 20 people wanting to kill me. I mean, they would actually wait out in the parking lot to get a piece of me when I was leaving, you know. Oh, they mind so much. But there was no, there was no like, uh, oh, he took my wife, so I'm going to beat him. Next week, I'm going to get you because you took my wife. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Was, to be continued. <laughs> I got another oh. question for you. I, I was going to ask you, you know, what was the worst ask? beating you ever took but you know i'd rather hear what's the worst one you delivered because the first one sounds a little more embarrassing huh. why well, i beat him all the time delivered 
It was a good delivery. Yeah. Gonna, I was going to mention the guy's name, but I really don't want to embarrass him. This guy is a professional wrestler, and I had a Make a Wish kid. And this Make a Wish kid, he was pretty sick. And I used to, he used to come see all my matches, and he had to come with two nurses because he had all this oxygen hooked up to him and they had to give him IVs. Well, he wanted to meet this wrestler who's a hill, which is a bad guy. And nobody, no young kid wants a bad guy's autograph. He wanted his autograph. So I got down to rock him. I said, look, before we go out, I got a Make-A-Wish kid out there. He's a great kid. And he wants your autograph so bad. He just loves you. He got a book with you in it. He wants you. So he looked at me and goes, fuck that kid. I'm in Pittsburgh for two hours. You paid me 2200 bucks. I ain't signing nothing. I'm getting in there. I'm wrestling. I'm going to the airport and getting the fuck out of here. So I'm like, oh, you are, are you? Ha, <laughs> ha. So, <laughs> we just say, uh, I, I, deserve up, it. I, I worked real, when you call working stiff, as you hit the guy accidentally every once in a while, or you, or you do something real hard to him. Well, I was stiff the whole match on purpose. And he kept saying, Why are you getting so stiff? Why are you being so stiff? And I grabbed him by the head. I said, See that kid right there? He wanted your autograph, and you didn't want to give it to him. I'm banging his head off the side, ring post, <laughs> shit. So <laughs> I ended up getting my own. And then, Greg, and then Brutus the Bar and Beefcake was on the same match. He actually went out and sat with the kid, signed his autographs, gave him his gloves. And so he made up for what the other so professional wrestler, and he was a yeah. real popular too. Yeah, well, we know who you're talking about because you mentioned about this before on the show. And it's like, it kind of makes me disappointed because that was the first guy I ever interviewed, ever, you know, yeah. and that was in 2006. And he was nice to me. You know, we, we did a one hour interview like we're doing here in this hotel room where I currently work right now. And it was fine, but I, it kind of makes me disappointed that some people have egos, you know, right. besides of water. Well, you know, you, you got to have that kid, stage time and you got, can't be in a jackass. Meanwhile, yeah. the kids put you where you're at today. I mean, it's the audience, like all these actors are ignorant and stuff like that. We put you where you're at today. Sure. You shouldn't be mean to us, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, that's just yeah. the way it is. I, I agree because you know, like like last night, for example, you know, like we were supposed to do, like I'm not going to bash anything that happened last night because I, the, we got my brother in law and I we got treated pretty good overall, and I'm very happy with, with the results and everything. But a little miscommunication on on a, uh, a management side uh, made us come early because we thought we we're going to be a part of our meet and greet. She said, "Yeah, come down there by four o'clock and you'll you'll get to meet the band." And my brother-in-law was very excited because he really wants, you know, he wants to meet these guys, you know. And I do too because, you know, this is part of the whole thing, whatever, and I help put it together. And then they tell us that, oh, they're not, there is no meet and greet, but we'll do it after the show. And it's like, well, nobody ever said anything about after. They just said, come early. So we came like three hours early before the fucking thing even started. <laughs> but it was good, though. And I'm not going to bash anybody. It's just, you know, learn to communicate with people. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all. But other than that, I'm ha I was happy. It was fine. It was, you know, I don't want to have bad karma or anything. I was happy. I'll tell you, some, of, some of the best times in my life was um when I worked with Tony. It really was. It was, we had a blast. You know, bro. And I, I'll tell you, an, another time when, when I did the Screaming Sam Boxing Babes, Topless and stuff, that was a lot of fun. But, um, I you wrestled was Topless? What? Well, I, I used to have, um, <laughs> I used to have it's called Screaming Sam's. It used to be Jill Lawrence's boxing bags with Screaming Sam. We had a whole event there, like with girls fighting and stuff like that. And I thought this was my hour, dear knuckle uh, brain. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Well, Sam's a moderator, two, so he can ask a question. Those, like are two, those are the two times in my life, no, that <laughs> I really enjoyed myself was doing that. Like comedy, he gets scared of, but. My brother, he could do comedy. He could do wrestling. He could draw a crowd. He could talk to anybody. You know, bring him anywhere he wants to go with them. And they just that. they love that kid. Did they ever do like uh? Because what you're kind of talking about is almost like I'm getting the vibe from the movie Stripes, like when they did the, the mud wrestling and stuff like that. Did you ever, uh, Mad Dog? Were you ever involved in like a mud wrestling match or anything like uh, that? Some weird gimmick uh, like that? The backyard wrestling. I told you. All they were, one, the one time I showed up, I figured I'm going to be in a ring. It was like 10 tables screwed together, and mm -hmm. they put ring posts up, and they put, like, padding from uh, carpeting, and then they put canvas on it. And I hit the <laughs> ring, stuck a rope, and went right through it, you know? And they're like, sure. oh, there was a bunch of guys there. I mean, this place was nuts. I mean, like I said, 
I didn't care where I had to go or if I was putting a match, I didn't care if I was wrestling on concrete. I don't care if they had bet. You couldn't get ring time, and you had to take everything you got. Yeah. Everything was practiced for you, and 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 it's crazy. I mean, some of the rings I wrestled, and you can't even call them rings. They were Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this question here, and then we're gonna get more personal here when it comes to this because this is about money. What's the what's the least you ever got paid, and what's the most you ever got paid? I wouldn't get paid for some of my shows because every time I got paid, I would give it back to the. Like I wrestled for Maker, which that was my passion. So anytime I I wrestled, even my brother, my brother used to buy all these fifty fifty tickets, you know. So they had money to run the show, and if he won the fifty fifty, he donated it back to the cause. He never took. I mean, I'm gonna tell you the truth about my brother. He's talking about me. When I started, he there was a guy named Sal Conti, Johnny, if you remember, mm-hmm. uh, Sal, and my brother. To get me on his shows, and he did a two-hour TV show every Saturday, like Studio Wrestling. And to get me on the show, my brother had to buy all this airtime, but it was good for his tow truck company. And he had to buy commercials. And one day we weren't going to run. He says, dude, you ain't going to win your belt tonight. I'm like, he goes, the show went bellied up. And the next thing you know, we're running. And I'm like, how are we running? He goes, by the grace of God, someone bought all the freaking tickets, and we can run now. And I'm like, oh, oh shit. And here I find out. Years later, it was my brother. He bought all the tickets so I could have ring time, and then, and that's when I won the North American Heavyweight Title. I mean, I uh, could never be like that, you know. He used to lend me his truck to break the ring. You guys don't understand. Just to get eight minutes in the ring, what I had to do, I had to get up at noon. I had to go retrieve the ring out of our our warehouse that was set up. I had to tear it down. Put it on my brother's flatbed truck. And if we didn't have his truck, we'd never get the ring anywhere. Because then we'd have to rent a U-Haul and that would take money out of our kitty. I would use his truck, go put the ring up at the hall where wrestling. Okay, I'd get in the ring for eight minutes. Eight freaking minutes. And they'd have a guy in the crowd. If they they let you know when it's time to end the show, you know. Like if you sure. had too much time, it's like a comedy act. They throw the red light on him. And you see that light come on, you got to do your finishing move. Sure. But anyways... I would wait till the last wrestler would go on. It'd be midnight. Then I'd have to tear the ring down, put it on the truck, and then go put it up in the next con, and then go back to work. And I'd get home at 4 or 5 in the morning, go straight to work with blood hanging on my head, and oh, I smell like a dirty uh, <laughs> pair of underwear. Yeah, but that's what I had get eight minutes of ring time. Wow, that's that's pretty – that's crazy. That's a lot of sacrifice. So, so what you're trying to say is you – because of the job that you had and because of your passion that you really were, because a lot of wrestlers, you know, they struggle. There's a lot of independent wrestlers out there who are just looking for a break and not just ring time or whatever, but just looking for a job that's going to pay. So you, you never really struggled at all. As far as financially, you did pretty good uh, uh, because of other uh, things you had to go around. I didn't even care about getting on the big show. I didn't care. I was doing my passion. I was doing what I liked. I was doing it for my cause, the uh, handicapped kids. And and if I didn't make, that's how I got inducted into the Hall of Fame. Them guys were I with, excuse me, they were on WWF. They were on a lot of TV. I never had one, but they got me because of the hard work I did and my passion for it. I didn't care if I got paid. I went to Summersville, West Virginia, six hours away, and I didn't make a buck. I had to pay for a hotel room, gas, and you know, up and back. I thought I was going to get three hundred dollars. I'm the champion now. Here sure. I got squat because there was no money to give me. And if you asked for your money, you never did a show again. So sure, sure, sure. You know, I didn't care about it. Most people say don't quit your day job because you're not you're not good at your second job. You couldn't quit your day job to support no, your no. the better job. I had to work six, ten hour days a week to do what I had to do. Sure. You know what I mean, yep. a, lot of sac- a lot of sacrifice from family, missing family events and stuff. Well, let me I'm tell sure. you something. That's that's how our family is because I did the same thing. There's so many comedy acts that I gave the money back to the bar owners. I didn't want no money. I did it for the passion. I did it for the love of the Kinnisons. Everyone thinks you make money on what you're like. They think I'm making money on the Kinnisons. I'm not. I'm giving it back. And I paid everything out of my pocket what I did, all the traveling. And Tony's like me. He's got a good heart. And he never wanted money. Uh, we didn't. We didn't want the money. We wanted to have the fun and the time. And look what we have. We have memories that will never end. 
never end. You know. So so speaking of memories, now let's let's talk about this past Saturday. Kind of play play by play between the two of you guys because you were there of uh, what the day was like. I had a lot of anxiety going in because, like I said, I I keep on questioning myself, but I know it shouldn't, and I always doubted myself. Why why are they picking me? Of all the people out there that deserve it, and why me? I, I'm sitting in there with four, four legends of the wrestling world, and actually nobody, well, everybody in Mount Washington knew me. We did it in my home neighborhood. I mean, we we sold the crowd out, right, John? There was a lot of people there. Plus, Tony and, uh, was mentioned. Tony mentioned me one time. He said, "I think they're playing a trick on me." I said, "Tony, they're not playing a trick on you." You know what I mean? He thought he really didn't think he was going to get inducted to the Hall of Fame, but <laughs> he did. I well, mean, I started off like this. Let me show you. The city of Pittsburgh gave me a plot. Uh, what do you call it? A proclamation, and they gave me this, and it says on November fourth every year. It is KSWA Mad Dog Day. So I got my own day named after me, and it's and it's official. And then since they did that, the, the, the state of Pennsylvania, or the, uh, Allegheny County of Pennsylvania, recognizes November 4th, just my day, Anthony Lutz's day. And and the state did it too. So I don't know where that one is. I can't find it. But that's that was pretty cool. That happened before we got our our, our uh our plaques, you know. No, one but, one happened before, one happened after. Yeah. Yeah, that oh, was wow. like on the match they had an intermission so they could sell their refreshments and beer and so you know, it, is that like like giving you like the keys to the city, so to speak, kind of re refer reference yeah. kind of? Yeah, they have every every November fourth will be recognized as my day. So uh, I wonder oh, if they're no, Hey, all my friends said, are we going to get a day off for that or what? I'm like, yeah, all right. <laughs> hey, get free beer, you know, and pussy. No, I just, 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 just whatever. <laughs> we'll be clean, we'll be clean kid, today. I can't believe this guy gets all the luck in the world. I've been doing Screaming Sam for fucking, since 1998. I didn't get all fame. <laughs> <laughs> you hate Sam Kennison, that's why. Yeah, uh, that's true. <laughs> But I mean, it should, I mean, the recognition would be nice, at least, you know, for a tribute act, anyway. Well, I'd like to thank Sean for interviewing me a couple of times. Thank you, Sean, for recognizing <laughs> Scream <and> Sam. <laughs> yeah, look where we are now, right? What's that going on? Back is what I get, and the other half goes in the Hall of Fame. There's two of them. Then they have a big, they had a big banner, huh, John? Yeah. With all the inductees on it, and that'll be hanging forever. Every show they do, that'll be hanging from the rafters. So. Is that, cool. it, 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 is that is that is that is that place where you guys were at, like where they have all the events anyway for wrestling over there, or or other the things? Fans, they they run there once a month. Okay. They okay. run four run every 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 week. They have four different places they go to, okay. and they're all little like fire halls or little church halls. They ain't nothing big. Sure, sure, sure. You know what, though, you know what you're doing. I think from now on, I'm going to go every year to the to see who gets inducted into Hall of Fame because you were lucky enough to get it. And I want to see and support other people to get it too, because uh, they may not bring the crowd you brought. You know what I mean? We well, don't you know. know. You know my best friend. My, What's that? My best friend's dad was inducted two years ago. He died. He lived a couple doors down from me. His name was Rocky Romano. He was like they called him the Roman Gladiator. And he went as Rocky Romano, too. He worked for the city of Pittsburgh's police department. He was a motorcycle cop. And when they found out he was wrestling, they were going to fire him. So that's when he put the mask on. So they didn't know it was him. But he got inducted <laughs> two years ago. And he actually died and his son died a year after. But it was just, I'm honored to be in the Hall of Fame with him. Here's a guy that when I was a kid, I looked up to him because I knew he was a WWF superstar. And he lived two doors. Down. There's actually all these wrestlers that come out today. Are from Pittsburgh. If you remember Bruno San Martino, uh, he was from he was from a place called Oakland, Pittsburgh. He did my first match. He was the guest referee, and I got a big Bruno San Martino poster. He signed to Mad Dog. Good luck on your career, love Bruno. And the Bia, Bia hanging off the rafters next to him, amazing dude, amazing. What, what about hey, uh, what about? I got a question. Okay, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead, sir. I, I got a question. Well, you want me to monitor? Yeah, go ahead. Yep. I have a, uh, someone said that um, George said so on 316, the fans drink Budweiser in honor of Stone Cold. What's the thing to do on November 4th for Mad Dog Day? So, hey, what should we do? Drink so reserved. You get a drink Crown Royal. 
You gonna let me talk? <laughs> it is Crown Royal XO Day, buddy. You fill that glass <laughs> up with Crown. You get a bottle of beer. I drink Bud Light. I don't care if I dress in drag. I'll dress in my wrestling outfit. I can't drink nothing else. I get a headache. But I drink Bud Light and I drink a big glass of Crown Royal. <laughs> we'll share every November fourth with that, bud. Absolutely, absolutely. Now I want I want to know like you were talking about like former WWE WWF superstars. Is the Angle family involved in this somehow? Like, would, yeah, are they? they in this? Yeah, because I'm a big Kurt Angle fan. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Kurt Angle fan, so I was just kind of wondering if they had any participation in in this Hall of Fame or any Hall of Fame in Pittsburgh or Pennsylvania or whatever. No, 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 they didn't. But they grew up. He grew up in Mount Washington, where I grew up. He grew up over in the Duquesne Heights side of Mount Washington. He actually moved to Mount Lebanon when they got a little bit older. But he wasn't even a bad guy, Kurt. His brother Mark and his other two brothers were ten times better than him. Mark Angle can clear a bar out in fifteen minutes, and that means every guy in there. And he'd fight everyone. He was a bastard. But I actually worked with Kurt Angle before he got into WWF or the WWE, wherever he started. Mm -hmm. I worked in a little church, little uh, warehouse in McKeesport. I was his fall guy. Me and a guy named Vinny the Mutt and a couple other guys we used to go in there and let him throw us around and get. Warmed up to get to the WWF because oh, I was okay. he pawns. If he could pick me up and throw, I mean, he'd have an easy time with almost because all them guys are were three eighty and above. I uh -huh. remember King Cole, he was a five twenty five, and I had to pick him up and throw him over the ropes. Yes. <laughs> big boy. Hey, wasn't Bernie his? Wasn't our cousin Bernie his bodyguard or something? Bernie knew him real well or something. Yeah, third angle. Well, no, he was a boilermaker. His oh, whole okay. family were boilermakers. Look at this ticket my, my nephew got. The last three digits. You see it? That one, oh. zero, six, six. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. No, that, that's exciting. I mean, just, just, just to know all that stuff. Now, when you, uh, before you got inducted, like when you were there at the event, like, uh, it seemed like they had a pretty good crowd, as it looked like. Uh, what was the... Uh, like, it seemed like everybody, as soon as they announced your name, everybody got, you know, they all cheered and were very excited. I mean, are you pretty well known in that area? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, everywhere I go, they, uh, all the younger guys, hey, what's up, champ? What's up, champ? And that was before all that. Because when I won my first belt, I lived with that thing. I took it to every bar. I took it to restaurants. I took it to shopping centers. I would get free drinks, free hamburgers, free everything. My wish you knew exactly what the, the, what the belt looked like in me because I had that thing everywhere with me. And I'd wear it on my shoulder and walk in there here. Want to see a real belt? You see? And that belt I won was actually Bruno San Martino's belt he wore it the last time. And then they put it back into the Hall of Fame. And the real Hall of Fame, the WWF Hall of Fame, right. my name was on the back of that belt. I was the last guy who won it. Jeez, so, that's, that's unbelievable. So for any up and coming young talent out there that uh, wants to start wrestling, what what advice would you give him or her? Because it seems like a lot of females like to wrestle too. So, I mean, what advice from from a legend like yourself uh, would you give somebody that wants to start this? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was you know what? A lot of them abuse their boys. Like I say, you know, do a lot of mad stuff. You got to come off the ropes, okay. But well, my big thing was selling it before I got to the ring. If I made you love me, if I made you hate me, see, if they call you a baby face, you got to have light colors. You got to come out hugging and kissing kids and bullshit <laughs> like that. If they call you a heel, you got to come out like throwing kids around. Like I told you, I should take my kid to match. I'd smash him in the head with nachos and dump coke on him. He'd be like, Dad. I'm like, everybody calls me Dad. We're in West Virginia. <laughs> and I, you know. So if you told yourself before you got to the ring whether you were a hill, which is a bad guy, or a baby, a good guy, and they don't care how bad of a wrestler you are, they just want to kill you or they want to like you. So if you miss the mark, you don't get everybody saying, oh, he sucked, man. He, he didn't know how to do this. Like, nobody even cared what I was doing in the ring. They just wanted to kill me before I got out of the ring. You know? So, so, so okay. So how were you How were you at cutting promos? I, I, I take it you probably were – you put a lot of feeling to your promos, I, I'm guessing. Yeah, like you said, we didn't have too many promos back there because we didn't run every week. But I did do a promo. I was wrestling a guy named Mandy Fernandez, who was a big time WCW guy. And his name was Mandy, and his move was the flying burrito. 
So the guy goes to me, hey, what are you going to do when he hits you with a flying burrito? And I'd sit there, I went like, well, Tony, the only thing a flying burrito ever gave me was gas. And I walked off the <laughs> slip the mic and everybody was just laughing. They're like, oh, that's good. That's a great promo. The only thing a flying burrito ever gave me was gas. That was my <laughs> fame on the, on the only promo, the only promo I got, you know. Hey, Dave, well, was in the Dave Lezinski says the legend Tony Lutz. <laughs> Hi, Dave. Love you, buddy. That's a good friend of mine. We call him Rabbit. Oh, that's, good, that's good amazing. Forty so some you, years, awesome dude. Love you, Rabbit. You guys got any more questions for for Tony? Because I for Mad Dog? Because I I don't really have any more. But we can uh, keep this going if uh, you guys want to talk more about his career and stuff. Because. Yeah, we're What's almost... up to Tony? I mean, I don't, I don't, I know everything about him, so I don't know what the. Well, okay, tell uh, tell us what you, why you think the Mad Dog wanted to wrestle, why you think he was passionate about it. Well, when we were kids, we used to always fight and box, and no, not box, but we used to have wrestle <laughs> matches at home, and we loved it. With my two cousins, Marky and Dookie, and we used to go down my basement, my dad's house, have tag team match- matches. And it was something in our blood all the time. I'm surprised I didn't want to do it. You know what I mean? And um, Tony just took it to fur- took it further, and uh, that's what he always wanted to do. But he used to beat me up all the time when we were kids. You know what I mean? Was- yeah, my brother too. <laughs> I used to break ladders over his back or for the bunk beds and <laughs> bunk bed ladder over my back one day. I was like, this is- you remember we're we're acting. He ain't acting. He almost killed me with the freaking thing. <laughs> and my cousin Marky, my cousin Marky was a nut. You couldn't even touch him. If you touched him, he had to hit you last. He had that, I don't know what the hell you call it, but if you bumped him, he had to hit you last. So we would jack him off, and it made him a tough guy, dude. He'd fucking run us down and beat the fuck out of us. And uh, you know what? Funny, I didn't start wrestling until I was in my late 30s. And my wife's like, wanted to kill me. She goes, Now you're an old man. Why are you starting this? And I wrestled with a bunch of 20 year old kids, so I had to keep up with them, you know? Yeah, yeah right. but you followed you followed wrestling all your life. Oh, all my life. I yeah. worked security for the I used to walk the wrestlers to the ring in security for a couple organizations. And that like I said, that's how they found me. Well, like Diamond Dallas Page started when he was later in life, like uh, like the age of thirty or, or thirty eight is what but either God. he either he won the, the championship at thirty eight or he was like he started his career at thirty eight. So I was just like, eh. You know, look at him now. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's it's amazing. I yeah. always, I like, I always loved WCW. I was more of a WCW guy than a WWF guy, just because to me, WCW was where it was at. Uh, I got to almost go to uh, the Road Wild or the Hog Wild pay per views and Sturges when they were over there. I don't know if you remember those at all or not, but uh, they were they were fun and uh, got to watch them on pay per view anyway. But like I, the biggest angle for me was the NWO. When the NWO thing was formed, that made wrestling cooler than it ever was ever. Hey, stop you know? Real quick, this yeah, is a belt that I wore. You know Virgil? He was the bodyguard yeah. for the NWO. Well, Virgil lives in Pittsburgh. He's sure. another Pittsburgh boy, and I and I uh, I see him all the time. He sells merchandise at flea markets. <laughs> well, I wrestled him. <laughs> I wrestled him and I was the champ. And look what he did to my belt after he left. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sprayed the NWO on my belt, and I wanted to kill him because that was a that was one of the belts I got to keep. And uh, yeah, he sprayed the NWO, and I can't get it off. Were you a big like WCW fan too back in the nineties? Uh-uh. Yeah, I loved I loved WCW. You remember like the class of champions I- and stuff? Yeah, I love WC. I love Ric Flair. I loved all them guys. They were so I the WWF to me, it's just McMahon, he bought everything up so it wasn't fun anymore. Like I actually went to the ECW and when I finally didn't even get on in a match there, McMahon bought everybody out and I was thrown away like a piece of garbage. Because they only kept like the Dudley boys and the guys when you know, like the hardcore guys and uh, New Jack and all them guys were completely guys like me that like warmed to show up in that. We were a dime a dozen, man. You just got to throw it away like a piece of toilet paper. So that's Jeez. why I never I had no respect for Vince McMahon. And if I was just good enough to wrestle him, I wouldn't have wrestled for him. Do you and watch? Said, uh, do you watch buddy, like? Do you watch anything currently like AEW or anything like that? Because yeah, you know, because I mean? that reminds me of WCW kind of. Yeah. 
there's a couple backyard guys that are in there. A couple guys who started from the little organizations, never had time to climb up. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. Well, uh, Tony, I, uh, Matt, I really appreciate uh, letting us do this for you because uh, I really want people to hear your story. I'm glad that your brother Sam could be a part of this too, and Mama T, I'm glad you could be part of this as well. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, this is just a, a special interview, a uh, fan tribute to a guy who's not dead. He's alive, very much alive. Ah. Most of the time when you pay tribute to somebody, they're dead, but no, he's happily alive. Independent There's wrestler, the Mad Dog. There you go, yeah, Bruno. There you go. Yeah, sure. There you go, full Italian man. Yeah, Bruno. Bruno. I want to thank you for having me on, and and I look forward to being on your show every week. I, I'm going to get a lot of people to. I, I I told everybody to go to my link tonight, so there might be a lot of people who didn't get on because of that reason. But hey, Dave Rabbit, thank you for joining us, man. I I called him today and said, hey, you want to hear something interesting? So he come on. I'm I really appreciate that. He's a good friend well, Bill, of mine. Bill Ratcliffe was watching John Wayne Lenhart. He was watching. He said, um. How you how are you how young are you, Mad Dog? I told him 62. Um George. People, a lot of people don't is chat that though. George Lekovich? Is that George Lekovich? No, that one from uh, Texas, George Orlea. Oh, okay. Hey, you want to hear an interesting story? I, I was up, I have to go to his coffee shop every morning, and everybody knows who I am up there. And uh these two guys from Texas come in and they're going to a Steeler game. They live in Dallas, and that, but they love the Steelers. So we got the bullshit with them, and I told them about my history. They were actually going to spend an extra night in Pittsburgh to come watch my show, and then they were going to fly back on Sunday. And I'm like, dude, you just don't have to do it. It ain't nothing really big. And they're like, no, we want to, man. But they ended up flying home anyways. But they texted me, and I sent them all the pictures, and they were so appreciated that they, they even called me. And I, that's the kind of impression I like to put on people. I, I, I mean, I, when you come in, I want to talk to you. I don't care where you're from. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much money you got. I, I, you know, just talk to me like I'm someone. I want to be your friend. You know, I don't want to be this arrogant piece of shit like my brother. Hey, grave digger. <laughs> hey, grave digger, George. Yeah, that's my buddy. Yeah, grave digger, yeah. George. So yeah. I'm surprised that the KSWA never asked you to be part of like the the, the like the the higher end, so to speak, like the 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 board or whatever that makes these decisions on who we should pick next, you know, for the Hall of Fame. Did you ever ask them about that? Maybe to, to still be involved somehow, somehow. Well, I can still be involved. It's just that finding the time now, and like uh, I I usually go to their local matches when they're local. I go see them, and there's a guy on there named Trapper. He's uh he's actually the ring announcer in that. He he. No matter where I go, he makes a big stink about me in front of all the crowds and that. And I, I don't like that. I usually shit in the back. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Mama T, you're awful quiet tonight. You have a chance to interview the Mad Dog. What are you doing? Well, you see, I'm drinking coffee. That's what I'm doing. My goal is me and George going to come there someday, and we're going to go to your bar. We're going to tear it down. We're going <laughs> to drink. We're going to get Sean to come. We're going to do a live show someday from where – where are you from again? Yes. Yeah, Minnesota. Where are you from? Absolutely. Minnesota. You're from Mac Minnesota. McIntosh, yeah, Minnesota. And, and, and where I'm moving to, Brooks, that's only like 20 minutes from McIntosh, so it's not that far. So yeah, you're coming uh, to hang out tomorrow. We're gonna, right? we're probably, I'm gonna probably, yeah, tomorrow I was gonna come over. Well, depending on the weather, I'm hoping the weather will be okay because the roads are kind of shitty right now, at least here at Greenbush anyway. But yes, I was gonna come over tomorrow night, and I, I'm hoping that maybe when we do our next episode here a week from well after on the twentieth anyway, that maybe we could do something together. Either you come over or I'll come over, and we'll just. Uh, do a show together with everybody, you know. Just... Hey, Sean. Hey, Sean, when you told me you were stuck, you just got back from Greenbush, I thought you were banging Sasquatch's wife. You saw a green bush. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Green That's the name of our fucking town, man. I tell you, oh, green oh, fucking you know, bush. Yeah. From there called Climax as well, so. Yeah, yeah, we Climax. We went to Climax and we went to Fargo. Yeah, we climaxed pretty you hard. Climax before you stuck it in the green bush or after? <laughs> oh, b uh, both. We pull in, right. pull out. <laughs> fun to do. I am not multi talented. I know, I know. You're a comedian. Maybe we'll have to do your your comedy side hey, sometime. Before we end the show, I want to say one thing. So let me know when we're ready to end because the Mad Dog don't finish the show 
without saying what I say when I leave the ring. So when so you go say, right ahead, man. I have the I gotta have the floor. You got the floor. This floor is yours. You do. You, you, yeah, we, we can edit it right. Before he, one more. One more thing before he gets signs on. Get your shit out now because when you do our show, we don't want to hear nothing about Mad Dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, that's what I say, you guys. We'll bury the wrestling shit, but you just got to send me some material so I can do my studying. And I don't want to look like some dumbass wrestler. Who only and has I, want three see, I want you to get a tripod so we can see your face, not your body. I want to see, like, like us guys, see our face. Well, see, well I can see his face. I can see his face. nose. It looks like the Liberty Tunnels. It looks like the, yeah, the tunnels you know, up in his. Say, Hey, yeah, now, if, if my body had improved that much, I'd be showing my whole body up, too. He's, he's done the a lot of work The only reason we see Johnny because he's on a 70-inch screen in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mad Dog, you got the yeah, floor. You can, sign you, can say, you can sign off for us. Let me tell you something in my interview. Let me tell you something, brother. You don't come in my backyard, and you don't pee on the Mad Dog's tree. So what you going to do? And the mad dog takes a bite out of you. Oh. <laughs> oh, All right. All right. Okay, we'll, yeah, see we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Everybody, thank you so much. I had a good time tonight. Maybe we'll have to do this another time where I can finish some more good stories. But other than that, we're out. I love you guys. Thank you. All right. And we're out for All that right. call. Bye.